Welcome to From Betrayal to Breakthrough. I'm Dr. Debbie Silber, and today's guest is Magdalena Shalaki. Magdalena is the founder of Hormones Balance, a thriving online community dedicated to helping women balance hormones naturally. Magdalena is a nutrition coach, certified herbalist, a published best-selling cookbook author, speaker, and educator. She's got a long history of hormonal challenges. Her health crisis was the direct result from a highly stressful life in advertising, starting from Graves and Hashimoto's disease, autoimmune conditions causing thyroid failure, total burnout, and estrogen dominance. Today, she is in full remission, lives a symptom-free life, and teaches women how to find their sacred hormonal balance with her books, online programs, and education. If you weren't sure how stress is impacting your hormones, buckle up, everyone. I have Magdalena Shalaki with me, and she's going to be talking about simple steps to help regulate your hormones, look, feel, and live better. Get a pen and paper for this one. You're going to want to take lots of notes. Here we go. Okay, everybody, I have my friend Magdalena Shalaki with us. And you know, you've heard me say so often how stress creates symptoms, illness, condition, disease. Well, I brought her in to speak specifically about something so common after betrayal, and that's a stress-related disease and specifically estrogen dominance. So welcome, Magdalena. Thank you so much for having me. I can't wait to our chat today of course and and this is you know i specifically wanted you on the show because this is something that happens we're shocked by this betrayal from a family member partner friend co-worker self it could have happened a long time ago it's not necessarily it has to be recent but then we start having these stress-related symptoms can you tell us what's going on and then what's estrogen dominance and why is that showing up yeah, so, you know, your community is, is very specific to dealing with, a, 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 you know, a, a horrendous trauma, right? Like it, you, you put a woman through. And, and I say woman because I, I know anybody can go through stress, but I feel like women, as women, our hormonal balance can go out of whack a little bit faster than men's hormonal uh, balance. And it's a little unfortunate, but there's a different theories why that happens. But Let's not let's not drill into that too much. It's just you know just take it as a fact. The, the empowering thing is that there's so many things that we can do to really increase our resilience. And you know one of the fundamental things that happens with stress is that we release a hormone called cortisol. Cortisol is um, something that will deplete you of um, progesterone. And so this is one form of estrogen dominance is when a woman is depleted in progesterone. And there is then become, becomes her, her, her um, levels of estrogen become excessive. And that's what we call, that's what we call estrogen dominance. Um, you know, oftentimes you see this in, um, in women who had, for example, something traumatic happened to them. And six months later, they start developing um, symptoms that they, you know, they look around and go like, where did that come from? Right. And so those symptoms can be, so let's talk a little bit about the symptoms of estrogen dominance. You know, it can be anything from um, if a woman is still cycling, right? Suddenly uh, losing your period, right? Your period just stops and it just doesn't happen or having irregular periods. Or suddenly you develop PMS like from hell that you had never had before. Or instead of having a nice regular, you know, three to five day period, you develop a period that runs for 20 days and you just feel absolutely exhausted because you've just lost so many nutrients with the blood flow. Um, and then, you know, and then you can go into developing a lumpy breast, fibrocystic mm -hmm. breast, painful breast. That's another very common symptom of estrogen dominance, right? And women certainly who, um, you know, whether it's cyclical, that it goes with your cycle and say before your period, you suddenly go like, oh, well, that really hurts. But when, you, when you're really stressed out, you go like, wow, now I can't even put on my bra, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have, you know, something that's super common in a lot of women, and that is fibroids. Um, a lot of women have fibroids. Um, in fact, 85% of African-American women will develop a fiber at one point in their life. And Caucasian women fare just a tiny bit better, uh, but it's 65%. So it's, you know, it's still a quite high percentage. And, and as much as fibroids are benign, the challenge with them is that they are, they can be very uncomfortable. They can cause very painful sex. They can be very concerning to a woman, cause very heavy periods. But 
Um, but it's also a signal, your body's signaling you is that I am not detoxing estrogen very well, or I'm too low in progesterone, and then I, I need some help from you. Um, the classical symptoms of low progesterone that I was alluding to is when you're having, suddenly having sleeping problems like you never had before. So, you know, women will come and say, I've never had a problem sleeping, but then ever since uh, stress started happening and or I hit the mark 45 years and above, uh, my sleep is just never the same. I can't fall asleep or I wake up in the middle of the night. My sleep is just never as deep and I'm not as rested as I used to be at one point. So how do you know if, if because if this is part of the trauma, nighttime is the worst because that's where all the stuff that you could have avoided during the day because you were busy, you were distracted, really comes bombarding you at night. How do you know if it's, uh, it's just nighttime, you're processing everything that's, that you're trying to deal with or if it's an estrogen dominance you know, scenario? Is there a way to tell yeah, that's the difference? Yeah, that's a really good question. And, um, you know, and I think it, it's, it's never sleep alone is typically not the only symptom. I would then combine it with other low progesterone symptoms that typically go in pairs. So things like experiencing hot flashes and night mm -hmm. sweats would be another typical one. Um, some women will suddenly start seeing mid-cycle spotting that means brown, you know, discharge um, around your ovulation mm -hmm. and uh, which it shouldn't be there. And it's not a full period, it's just spotting. Um, another one is, you know, we get a lot more anxious. So progesterone is a very calming hormone, right? And then suddenly women who never had anxiety before um, suddenly start feeling really anxious and feeling like little gray mouths that is just so scared of everything, you know? Um, so those are typically, it's, it's, it's the combination of, of those two. Um, you can, of course, get a test that we can talk about testing in, in a second, if, if you like. Yeah, um, I would, I would love that. Yeah, go ahead. Do you want me to just to finish the symptoms of estrogen dominance? Please. There, um, there's, there's a few more. So, you know, other um, thing that a lot of women might notice is that you start putting a weight when, you, when you're really stressed out. And the estrogenic kind of weight is really fascinating how the body stores fat differently depending on which hormone imbalance you have. So with estrogen dominance, it's all around your hips and butt and thighs. So if I put on weight because I'm, I have a history of estrogen dominance, like big time, um, it all goes in, you know, in that, in that area. And that's your, your classical pear shaped woman, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. um, the other one, which is kind of, you know, fairly uh, benign, but it can be super annoying for a lot of women is start having a lot of discoloration above your lips, you know, on the sides of your chins here, chin, on, the, on your sides, and then right here above your eyebrows. Um, those, this is called melasma. Melasma is a classical estrogen dominance um, symptom, which gets worsened with sun exposure, right? So you start, start seeing women. And, you know, when women spend a lot of time and money on lasers and all sorts of whitening products, and the fact is that all of that comes back with the vengeance and it kind of destroys your skin too. Um, and they, unless, you, unless you address the estrogen component, you're never going to get rid of that. Um, gallbladder problems. So, so a lot of women, you know, as they stressed out, they start experiencing gallbladder pains and issues um, is an interesting uh, relationship between the two because gallbladder can, uh, oh, sorry, estrogen dominance, when you're stressed out, estrogen dominance can cause gallbladder issues. Mm -hmm. But it's also the other way around is that women who had their gallbladder removed six months later, one year later, suddenly start having horrendous estrogen dominance symptoms and never make the connection between the two. Um, so that's, uh, you know, and then I'll just finish off by saying, well, thyroid nodules is another very classical mm -hmm. one, the growth of, of nodules in your thyroid. But, you know, I'll just, and the part of the reason why this really prompted me to do this work is because I have estrogenic um, cancer deaths on both sides of my family. So those would be breast cancer, ovarian cancer, uterine cancer, thyroid cancer, which most of them are not deadly, um, and lung cancer and non-smokers. In men, on the other hand, Debbie, uh, we are talking about prostate problems and prostate cancer are both estrogenic cancers. Men also, men having, getting boobs, men boobs mm -hmm. are also highly estrogenic, right? Not surprisingly. So, so I mean, as you can see, there's a big array of symptoms here. Um, almost every woman, you know, whether stressed out or not actually experiences them. And one of the things that you know, I'd love to talk to you about more about that because you, you said you see this in your community. I certainly see that too. It's like when I was in private practice, I used to do health histories. Mm -hmm. And so we will do, you know, a, like a take a piece of paper, divide it in half. On the top half, you basically do a timeline from time of birth or even being in, you know, as a fetus, right? And then all the way till now. And, and then you start writing down all the different major events that happen in your life, right? 
um, you know, traumatic, something happens traumatic in a, in a mm -hmm. childbirth, right? Or car accident, caring for your mother um, on a deathbed for two years, right? Et cetera, et cetera. And then the other side of the, of the paper, you write down when do some, some of the major health events started happening for you, right? So, you know, lost gallbladder, was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, right? Was diagnosed with breast cancer. And it's what was fascinating um, to see through those health history is the correlation between the time, the time that it happened and within three to six months, you know, how this, this traumatic event has created or had created um, some hugely hormonal and specifically estrogen dominance, I found like autoimmunity, I found in, and, and, and as well as estrogen dominance were some of the biggest symptoms um, or hormonal imbalances that women would experience because of trauma. You know, and it was fascinating to see, and I'm sure you see that in your community. Oh, too. absolutely. And I, and I would really recommend it. I always try to get into the minds of my listeners, my viewers. Everybody should do that. Just as an experiment, just to see these were the experiences that happened. And, and this is what showed up. And I'm sure it'll be a, a little bit of a shocker. But it's a shocker. It's, a, it's also very emotional. And, yeah. and actually, like when I did mine, it took me about two weeks to put it together because there's a lot of things that I just buried um, and didn't really want to think about it. I wasn't making the connection and, um, you know, especially stuff from childhood. And so um, on having to go and ask relatives for, you know, timelines and story, like exactly mm -hmm. what happened there. Uh, so it was, it was, it can be really emotional, um, but it's also, can, you know. I can yeah. see that. And, and I would, I just want to, I just want to add to it that, this is no blame or anything. It's not yeah. to say that, you know, it's your fault that these things showed up or have been created, but there's a definite definitive correlation for sure. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and um, it definitely can bring different emotions for different folks, you know, whether it's a shame um, or blame, right? And, uh, or disparagement. But I think you can only improve your health when you look back at what has happened and then, you know, and say, look, I, this is, you know, I'm never going to do this again, right? Or if I'm stressed and it's inevitable because a lot of times you just can't avoid it, um, then I'm going to equip myself with all the tools that I know that I've learned um, to really increase the sense of resilience in my body that I've got like a little armor on me, right? That could really work for me. And I love that. I love that because think about it. If you're walking around, if you do this, you know, you, you write it all down, you see it so clearly, and then you just, you're so filled with shame and blame and you're angry and upset. And then you're saying, it, you know, it was because of this experience that happened 20, 30, 40, 50 plus years ago. And all this time I've been, you know, everything I've been doing, creating, re the way I've been reacting and responding is based on that experience and look what I've done as a result to my body, to my mind, to my heart, all of that. The beauty is stop now and do something about it right now. So I, I love that. If this is the day everybody says, okay, you know what? I got it. I'm doing something about it. That's wonderful. So now that we're in this mess, <laughs> take us out of it. So we've experienced all of this. We're not feeling well. We're having all of these symptoms. It's affecting um, our, our weight, our hormones, the way we look. And we realize, okay, you know what? The, I have paid enough of a price because of how I've allowed stress to, you know, to move through me. What do I do now? Yeah. So, you know, so like what I just described earlier is that um, when you are, when you when, when you have sites such high cortisol levels, right? You're depleting yourself of progesterone. Your estrogen levels go up. Your overall inflammation in the body um, is, goes up really, really quickly right and so the question is how do you how what can you do to support yourself in that so i'm not going to talk about the mindset stuff on dealing with stress because i know you've had other, a lot of other people dealing with that so maybe what i can you know address more from is perspective of is nutritionally what can mm -hmm. you do to manage your hormones and um and i think this this only works really well when you combine nutrition supplements right herbs with like mindful, whether it's breath or whether it's meditation or journaling, whatever it is, the tools that, you know, your folks are, are doing. And so, cause I find like just eating alone, um, healthy while, you know, not being mindful of everything else uh, in your life, is just kind of, it's not going to produce the results. Um, and the same thing, like if you're just sitting and meditating while your digestion is a mess, your hormones are a mess, you know, it's not going to be a very good meditation session. So, mm. so I think it's, they're all very integrative. 
Um, so, you know, I think one of the biggest things that I'm a big fan of is to really, and this is what I talk about in my latest book, Overcoming Estrogen Dominance, is to really um, bring the inflammation down in the body, right? And so stress already pushes up your, your um, inflammation up in it tremendously. And you can easily get that tested through, um, through various markers on inflammation. Uh, the CRP one is, you know, highly sensitive. Um, CRP is, is just one great marker to, to see um, how inflamed you are, right? And so, you know, changing your diet to some, something anti-inflammatory, what I mean by that is that surround yourself with a diet that eliminates the foods that are hugely triggering that we know is going to be gluten, dairy, eggs, soy, corn, and reduce the sugar as much as you can. And, you know, and in the sugar category, alcohol is unfortunately one of them, which for a lot of, for a lot of women, it is a coping mechanism, right? And mm -hmm. so you have to remember that when you do drink, it is inflammatory, it is sugar that you're incorporating into your, into your life, it does impair your liver. So there is, you know, there is, I'm not saying don't drink, but just do it very mindfully in moderation, always after a meal. Um, and rather in the afternoons rather than evenings and closer to bedtime, because it really is going to screw up your sleep. Mm -hmm. um, so... You know, so that's a really great starting point. And, um, and there's some, the, the blessing is there's so many of us in our space that have written anti-inflammatory books. And so that's like the first easiest thing to, um, to do. And, you know, I want to just give you an example of how, um, you know, how just the diet itself, like how it can really make you sick. I remember I always think about it, like, um, I already had an inkling back then I was, I worked in advertising and, and, um, and we were taken up on this trip to, middle of nowhere in China, uh, but my clients and the client thought it was a really great idea to kind of, because we all Westerners and we all the advertising agencies coming together and they go like, we want to treat them with Western food. So they were like, you know, sandwiches for breakfast, um, pasta for, for, for lunch. Right. And then like more, you know, more gluten for, for dinner. Right. It was just like gluten, 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 and cheese, 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 cheese. Right. And I was like, oh my God, people, I would much rather eat Chinese food. Right. It's way healthier. And, um, you know, and, and we were there for four days, three days in, and I was so sick. I was so inflamed. I couldn't take rings off my fingers. That, that month, my period was just from hell, right? Mm -hmm. And so it creates that kind of inflammation can really just make you sick, um, just messes up with your hormones big time. So just, just really one simple thing you can do right away. Um, you know, the, the other thing is um, when it comes to... Um, when it goes through times of stress, you're depleting yourself of specific um, nutrients. And so replenishing those might be a really great idea. And so a couple of them that come to mind right away is vitamin C, which your adrenals really get you know, uh, depleted. And vitamin C generally just gets depleted. And vitamin C not only is your adrenals are dependent on it, but also your progesterone. Guess what? Progesterone, one of the precursors for progesterone production in your body is vitamin C, oh, wow. um, and so and so is zinc, right? And so zinc and vitamin C combo is really great. You know, you know, Debbie, uh, we are recording this during COVID. Uh, when COVID started happening last year, I upped my vitamin C levels, and um, and 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 you don't want to go too high on zinc because it is a, it is a heavy metal, so you want to keep it like thirty to fifty milligrams a day. But vitamin C, I just upped it until. Um, and I'll, I can talk about it in a second, like, how do you know how much do you need? Because when you're really depleted, you need a lot more versus somebody who is, who is healthy. And, and, you know, my, uh, so I'm going through perimenopause and right now, my, and one of the ways you know that you're going through perimenopause and your, your progesterone is low, to your point about the question earlier, was that your cycle, uh, your luteal phase, so it means from ovulation to your period shortens. So instead of being, you know, the full 14 days for most women, Right. So historically, if your luteal phase was 14 days, suddenly you find yourself, it's like, oh, now it's 12 days. Oh, now it's 10 days. Right. So mine dropped to about 10 days, nine days. And, um, and so I was like, okay, you know, I'm going through perimenopause, no big deal. Um, and, uh, and then I upped my vitamin C levels. And guess what? I went back to being a, having a full on cycle. Oh, wow. 14 days. It's really powerful. Right. Yeah. And progesterone, you know, progesterone is an anti inflammatory hormone, it is your hormone that is going to help you with sleep, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's going to mitigate all the estrogen dominance craziness, the symptoms we talked about earlier. So um, just a simple fix like that. Now, how much vitamin C to take is really interesting. You want to do something called a bowel movement uh, challenge. And that basically means that you doze up on vitamin C until you get loose stool. And so believe it or not, some people might need to go as high as 6,000 to 8,000 milligrams. Wow 
yeah, to, to even get a bowel movement um, that's loose. And other people might be just at 2000, that's good enough. Mine, like my threshold is 1000, that's, that's all I needed every day. So a depleted person might need to be on six to 8,000 milligrams for, you know, even for two months just to replenish, right? But that's gonna be something your body's gonna be really thankful, thanking you for. Um, the other thing that gets people very depleted really quickly when you're going through stress is magnesium. And so, and you know, we have magnesium deficiency when you suddenly start developing body pains and aches, you start getting a lot of cramping, you get constipated, you start having heart palpitations, you don't sleep as well, you wake up in the middle of the night, or you can't go back, you can't go to sleep at all, mm -hmm. um, right? And then you crave chocolate. That's like a one-on-one, you know, uh, magnesium deficiency symptom, right? Is craving chocolate because cacao is very high in magnesium. So again, with magnesium, you can do the same thing is that you replenish your body with um, by using the, um, the bowel, uh, the loose bowel stool challenge. And, um, it's the same thing. I start off with 300 milligrams, keep going up and up and up. I mean, some people need again, really high doses in mm -hmm. order to feel that. Um, but you know, it's, uh, once you replenish the magnesium, I mean, everything really starts feeling so much better. This is also how it impacts the liver is that liver is, the liver is also very dependent on good levels of magnesium to help you detoxify those, those hormones. And so, so which would you recommend first, C, vitamin C or magnesium? Because I imagine I'll you don't want to do both. Okay. But then yeah. how do you know the dosage? Oh, I see. Right. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can do either one or the other. It doesn't okay. really matter. Yeah. But they're both important. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So vitamin C, zinc, and magnesium, you'd say those are the big three or are there more? Yeah. I would say those are the, those are all the big, the big three, you know, that you can support your body. Yeah. You know what I love about what you're what you're suggesting, and we talked about this before I hit record. You know, especially when it comes to betrayal, there are so many things that are out of our control. And what I love about what you're sharing is these are things we can do. You know, we can start an anti-inflammatory diet. We can start upping our vitamin C, our zinc, and our magnesium, and to see to see and feel a difference in you know as we're navigating something we never saw coming or it's been going on for a really long time but we just don't feel well i love the idea that these really they're 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 not so hard to do we can really see and feel a difference beautiful yeah totally yeah and you know i mean i will say that the one food that most people crave uh, badly during time of stress is obviously sugar right and mm -hmm. so you know the question is um it's, it's not, and I'm really not about deprivations. So it's not about depriving yourself, but it's really about finding the healthiest um, dessert options that you might want to want to do uh, substitutions for sugar. So I'm not talking here about like artificial sweeteners, but I'm talking here because they are highly inflammatory too. But I'm talking here about things like monk fruits, for example, M-O-N-K, monk fruit is a sweetener that's more and more available. That's going to make things taste sweet, right? I hate stevia, so I'm not going to say stevia. Mm -hmm. I think it tastes or, or the aftertaste is just blah. Um, but, you know, um, just sub, using some really healthy uh, sweetener substitutions, you know, to sugar is again, gonna lower the inflammation in your body and um, you're not gonna get the sugar low after that, you know, the, like a depressive um, elements to it. And you have recipes in your book too, right? I do, yeah. Tell so, us about the book because I, 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 love, I love what you're sharing. I love the idea that we can, you know, we can, we can, heal, you know, and, and change what kind of experiences we're having with when all of our hormones are going crazy. And to get this kind of level of support is just beautiful. Tell us about the book. Yeah. So you mentioned a recipe. So there is um, the, towards the, um, the third of the book, we have um, over 50 recipes and meal plans for two weeks. Um, they give you, you know, they give you a basic idea of how to eat. So you don't have to rethink really about it. And I will say that and I'm just going to stop you right there. This is for my viewers. You just got you just got a beautiful look. My listeners, you can't believe how beautiful this book is, and it's huge. It's. I mean, you can hurt somebody if you throw them at someone. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. <laughs> it's beautiful. So okay, so you have recipes in there. What else so, do you have in there? Yeah. So the recipes are sort of um, the second part because. I, I just want you to understand why I'm asking you to eat this way um, so that you can, that w once you understand, you can start modifying them. And, and, and you know, I just want to say also, Debbie, the recipes are written in a way that they contain no more than five to six ingredients uh, that you need to put in. All of them are found easily in most health food stores and supermarkets, and they don't have more than 30 minutes active time. Um, because I personally actually, believe it or not, I don't like to cook. I don't like spending time in the kitchen. I like quick recipes. 
And so we also have a lot of instant pot recipes so that really you just speed up the whole process. And I love um, that. I love that because, you know, think about it. What's adding to our stress is if we have to learn something new and it's so overwhelming and there are 30 totally. ingredients and some of them are these weird ones we've never heard of. So yeah. I, I love that, that you're simplifying it for That's us. Right. You know, I, I love curries, but then when every time you look at a curry recipe, it's got like, you know, um, 20, uh, uh, spices in there right and i'm like oh. so that's so, one of the things we can get when we're out but for two yeah minutes. exactly <laughs> okay. exactly so yeah. the rest of the book is you know is, is um is written in a way that i start off with the foundation um for hormones and really the the foundation for your hormones is taking care of your the um you, your gut so your gut health and doing the elimination diet is going to help you tremendously um with that one of the big things that women with hormonal problems experience is constipation so constipation isn't cool. Well, it is uncomfortable, uh, but more importantly on a physiological level is what happens is that you're recycling all the junk, including your, um, your hormones. And mm -hmm. instead of producing fresh hormones, you're just recycling those dirty hormones that cause a lot of the symptoms that we talked about at the beginning. So bad news alt altogether. This, the, 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 the following chapter is about restoring your liver health. And again, it doesn't have to be complicated because guess what? All the recipes are actually designed in a way that um, you will be doing all the three things at the same time. Meaning you're gonna be restoring your gut, you're gonna be supporting your liver, and you're gonna be balancing your blood sugar levels immediately, okay? Um, you know, one of the things that go out of whack during time of stress is um, blood sugar balance, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why we crave a lot of sugar. So one of the strategies in the book here is that no recipe here um, for breakfast contains actually sugar. Uh, neither is it artificial sugar. So. You know, you know me a little bit, you know, I'm, I'm not American. I, I've lived around the world. Um, I've lived in seven different countries. I've, I've traveled to over 40 countries. Wow. And one of the things I love to do is get up early in the morning and go to get breakfast uh, just from like local street vendors, you know? And, and so whether, you know, I'll go to Japan or Korea or Morocco or Peru uh, or Turkey, right? whenever you go and get grab local breakfast, not the one in the hotel, right? Because they cater to, um, to tourists like us. It, just the local breakfast, there is never any sugar that be, ever, mm -hmm. right? I mean, there might be an element of like drizzle, a bit of honey in Turkey, right? Or as such, but you know, it's always a savory breakfast. And so that was um, something that I realized in my troubles and I started doing more research and it's like, oh my God, it makes sense. Because when you start off your day with a lot of sugar, you know, and even if it's like a bowl of cereals or it's a bowl of um, uh, oatmeal with fruit on it and, and drizzled with some maple syrup, well, guess what? You're just giving yourself a sugar bomb. And the problem is that when you're already stressed out, throwing, you know, you're, you're already throwing your hormones out of balance with stress, adding more sugar to this. Sugar is just, remember the sugar and insulin, insulin is a, is a hormone too. So you're really adding to the fire by starting off your day on that note. Instead, and, and, yeah, yeah and, and think about it. this is good for for parents too. look what you're feeding your kids for breakfast. Holy moly, that makes such a difference. It's a whole topic for another day. But OK, so th that's I mean, that's just incredibly powerful. So let how does somebody feel? So now let's say and then we're going to wrap it up. How does somebody feel when they've gotten their blood sugar back into balance? They've restored their gut their you know, everything's balanced. How will they feel once, yeah. you know, they've. So, so women, you know, when, when I polled our, our community and asked them like, what is the thing that you learned from us over the mm -hmm. course of the past few years and made the biggest difference? Uh, breakfast was the answer. And I asked why. And they said, because they felt very grounded. They felt very sharp in their mind. They felt like they don't have to, you know, rely on caffeine and sugar at 11 o'clock and then beat themselves up for like, saying, I am so weak. I can't believe I've surrendered to that stupid muffin, right? A lot sharper in their hands, um, a lot more energy, sustained energy throughout the day. And one woman said something that I never forget is that she said, to change my nights, I had to change my breakfast. So she was sleeping a lot better when she changed her breakfast. And something that we don't make a connection, right? Between what we do in the morning and what we do, you know, how it is gonna affect our night, right? And you know, in times of stress, I mean, you obviously want to have a good night's sleep, right? And so, which so few people actually get. So, regulating your blood sugar levels first thing in the morning with that kind of breakfast is going to help tremendously. Debbie, if I have like once a month, once every other month, right? I will have 
I'll surrender to the idea of having a pancake. I don't know why I love pancakes. They never don't make me feel good, but I'll just I'll be like, screw it. I'm just going to do it. And just kind of remind myself what it feels like. Right. Let me tell you 20 minutes after that, I feel like my brain just isn't working anymore. I'm so foggy, um, you know, foggy brains. I don't have the energy 11 o'clock. I want to go and have a nap. Right. And then, you know, um, and then I crave more sugar. So like, by, I can't survive till lunchtime. So by 11 o'clock, I'm like, I want some coffee, which I never drink. I want a muffin, right? All of that stuff. And, and the, the vicious cycle continues. So really huge difference. Huge. Yeah, that's amazing. And you know what I love about it? Every single symptom that you, that you said can help us so much more effectively navigate through our betrayal. I mean, think about yeah. it. If we're not foggy, if we're clear, if we have more energy, if we feel more grounded, that's yeah. the way you want to move through any sort of stress and trauma. So Magdalene, what do you want to, as we wrap up, what do you want to make sure everyone knows? <laughs> Besides this, you know, the encyclopedia of wonderfulness, give us just, what, what do specifically women need to know? Ooh, um, you know, I, I think it's the, um, it's, I think I want to just circle back to what we said right at the beginning is pick something that you can really do something really, really nourishing and nurturing for yourself in time of stress. And I also don't want to be adding stress to your current stress, right? Of going like, oh, this woman that I heard on Debbie's show, she's like said, do this and do this and do this. And, and the truth is you don't just have to do everything. And so if you can just give yourself permission and space things out. So for example, say, you know what? I'm just going to cut out gluten. Um, for, for this month, that's all I'm going to do, right? Screw everything else. Like doesn't matter about anything else. Let's just do one thing at a time. And I think it's, it's just, you're going to last of the entire stress you're putting on yourself because we don't need to add, be adding more stress to your life. Um, and that way, you know, just, and, and then when you see the results and how much better you feel, you're going to be much more compelled to then moving to the next thing and maybe saying, you know what, I'm going to try the savory breakfast thing that she's talking about and do my dinner leftovers from last night and have that for breakfast and see how I feel, right? So just really one step at a time, every small change matters. That, that definitely takes the pressure off. And I always tell, you know, I always tell everybody we're, we're only moving in one of two directions further or closer to the body, health, life, lifestyle we want. So think about it. If you're just making that one change, it's moving you closer. And that's a great thing. Where do we go to learn more about you and the great work you do? Uh, hormones with an S, hormonesbalance.com is my website. And, um, you know, the book is Overcoming Estrogen Dominance. You can get that on Amazon in the United States. If you're from overseas, then go to overcomingestrogendominance.com. And we do ship internationally there from that website. Beautiful. I want to thank you so much. I'm sure everybody, I was writing so many notes and I'm sure my listeners and viewers did the same. You are clearly the expert on, ex, on estrogen dominance and so many more things that I, I love that we can grab hold of this one thing and it can make a major difference. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Debbie, for having me. Wow. That was a fire hose version of incredible information about estrogen dominance and so much more. Stay in touch with Magdalena by going to overcomingestrogendominance.com and we'll have all of her information in the show notes at the pbtinstitute.com forward slash podcast. Here's my biggest takeaway. Making simple changes like including quality vitamin C, zinc, and magnesium can make a huge difference in how you feel. Also, just having a better breakfast can make you feel more grounded, sharper, and energized. And when you're moving through challenging times, we need all the support we can get. So including some quality nutrients is a great place to start. As Magdalena suggested, just start with one change so you don't overwhelm yourself and see how you feel. Great ideas from someone who's done a ton of research on the topic and has a wealth of knowledge to prove it. Like the show? Please subscribe, rate, and review. And of course, if you know of someone struggling to heal from a betrayal, be sure to tell them about the show. Thanks for listening. Can't wait to be with you next time. And here's to your breakthrough.